Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, a ridiculously entitled Karen claims to know better than me and sues me after she destroys her own car with her stupidity. Never mess with a mechanic. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the story. The title story starts like this. So plenty of mechanics cheat people simply because they can. People don't learn about their cars because that is for the menial laborers and the mechanics don't like being seen as menial laborers. I have worked hard to ensure that I am honest though, from the first time I entered a professional auto shop to the time I bought my own garage. It doesn't mean that I escaped the issues that come from my fellow mechanics scamming people though. I start the mornings in my garage taking my time with breakfast and coffee. I am always available for my staff, but mornings usually come with routine work and they hardly need me hanging over their shoulders. When customers pay for diagnostics, it's a common procedure in my garage for the workers to go over it with their own eye and then call me to ensure that nothing was missed or misinterpreted. Other than diagnostics, I usually only have to end my breakfast early when I start hearing raised voices. Unfortunately, the two go hand in hand too often, still, it was shocking when I heard a woman screaming in my garage on a Tuesday morning. I was out of my office in moments, I begged my workers as a rule and was more than ready to send her to find another garage. Our Karen was screaming at one of the newer members of my staff. I still hadn't had a clue what was happening when I arrived because Karen had devolved into pure verbal abuse of my newbie because women who tried to be grease monkeys were the ones that ruined it for the rest of them. I won't even try to understand what that is supposed to mean, I told Karen that she would need to calm down or I would kick her out and go so far as to tow her car to a lot where she could pick it up. She put on a saturine sweet grin and said that she was happy to have someone be honest with her, unlike this BITCH. She drilled an accusing finger at my newbie and insisted that I fire her and make sure she never touches another car so she cannot try to scam other women. I told her again that she would need to calm down or leave my shop. This time she told me that she would happily leave but my workers were trying to charge her for a diagnostic that they used as cover to sabotage her car. Finally, I learned something about what was going on. Going on, I made sure the woman's Kia Soul was staying put and stepped away with the newbie. The garage was full and plenty of eyes stared at my back as I left the woman to rant where they could all hear. I had the newbie explain to me what happened, she was full of nerves and I realized she actually thought I might fire her. By the end, I was laughing and reassuring her that firing her was the very last thing I would do. The ball joint is where the drive axles connect to the wheels. As far as potential failures go in a car, this one is not the priciest in isolation. However, it breaking down on the road won't result in a sputtering failure or smoke that brings the car to the side of the road waiting for a tow. Most likely, you will quickly lose control and risk going off the road or hitting other drivers. All the while, it can wreak havoc on any parts on the underside of your car. And well, Karen's ball joint was incredibly loose on her front driver's side axle, she had come in for an oil change and authorized a simple diagnostic. My manager took care of giving the car a once over and did not spot anything but when the newbie was doing the oil change, she spotted an issue with Karen's car. The manager had not told Karen the results of the diagnostic, that was my responsibility, but he had stepped away and let the oil change go on, so Karen assumed that she was fine. So when the newbie then came to her and told her about the issue and told her that she likely would not be able to drive out of the garage without it getting fixed, Karen blew up. I have watched the CCTV footage multiple times since the incident and it's truly incredible how quickly Karen emerged from her car and bore down on my newbie. Knowing what I now know, I'm just relieved that she didn't assault my worker. I recognize that the newbie is correct about the issue and that she was merely a little lax on procedure with precisely the wrong customer. I sent the newbie to take a break until Karen leaves. When I headed back into the garage to give Karen the rundown on our options, she already had a solution to the problem in mind. She was insistent again that I fire the newbie, this was the first and most crucial piece of business in her mind, and that I fixed the damage that Karen was certain the newbie must have inflicted on her car. Then of course, I would not charge a dime for any part of the visit and would send her on her way. My counter offer was that she would allow me to finish the diagnostic and confirm that it was done according to procedure. Then of course I would order any parts needed to make her car road ready again while I helped her get a rental car for the time it would take the parts to come in. And of course she would have to pay for the services that we would do on her car. I'd like to say that we haggled for the next few minutes but in reality I just took the onslaught of Karen's rage. 
Our negotiations ended promptly when Karen actually had the audacity to slap me for trying to ensure her safety and the safety of her vehicle, an investment of thousands of dollars. At that moment, I'll admit I was foolish and not concerned if anyone might get hurt. I had my staff release the car. I threatened to call the cops and finally got the woman to pay before she rolled out screaming abuses out of her car. She spit at me when I gave her one last warning about the risk of driving the car in such a state. Apparently, she knew everything there was to know about cars and ball joints and she knew it was not half of the catastrophic error we warned her it was. How dare we lie to her face? At least I was done with her, or at least that was my wishful thinking at the moment. Her car did not even make it home. I was so relieved when I heard that she went off the road into a ditch instead of causing harm to anyone else. I would have ultimately been responsible for any of that. Luckily, my conscience is more than happy to brush away any responsibility for Karen's car. She did not show up that same day, but some cops did come in late in the afternoon. They needed to get my side of the story on a police report that had been filed around the wreck that happened earlier that day. It was Karen's and I provided them with the paperwork for the diagnostic along with images of the issues that we had recommended Karen fix before driving the car again. As well as the CCTV footage of Karen's rampage ending with her physical assault of me. They could not disclose anything but said that they were happy with my cooperation and diligence and the next day we had less courteous visitors. Karen returned with her lawyer. She was quite proud of how just quickly she had managed to put a lawsuit against me together. The attorney definitely cost more than a ball joint fix. She told me about the report she had filed as well and that those cops I had threatened her with would be arriving soon. She claimed it was her responsibility as a good Samaritan to stop my shop before we could threaten to kill any other poor innocent souls. She also claimed that I would be refunding what she paid along with paying for the car repairs and hospital bills. She insisted to her lawyer that I be forced to sell my garage as well. I don't know a ton of legal jargon, but I could tell the lawyer was hesitant to be quite as vindictive as her when he saw how calm I was. What unfolded when the cops arrived was truly glorious. It was the same investigators that had come to the shop the night before. Of course, Karen expected them to be simple menial laborers as well and fall in line when she demanded they arrest me. She was miffed when they asked for the reason. Speaking as if to a child, she said, This man not only threatened to kill me, but then attempted it as well by damaging my property. If I had died, he would have simply gotten away with it too because of how worthless you are. Don't you remember the report I filed? The cops said they did remember. They also remembered coming to my garage yesterday and getting plenty of evidence to the contrary of what she claimed as well as evidence of her disturbing the peace and assaulting someone. The look of pure befuddlement on her face was priceless. It all became clear to her when they took out their handcuffs and went to arrest her for questioning. And well, if CCTV footage of her assaulting me was not enough, then the footage of her attacking the cop trying to arrest her was plenty. When I got called in to testify in civil court, her fines were stacking up and she was even likely to have minor jail time. If anyone were to ask me, then I would rather pay for a wall joint replacement, but I'm just a lowly mechanic, so no need to care about my judgment. Right, Karen? And yeah, ripe stars, I just love seeing Karens getting what they deserve, especially when they are super entitled and think they know more than anybody else. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. HOA fined me $25 per day for installing burglar bars on my windows. I sued them and one. No one was more disappointed than me about having to put unattractive burglar bars on my windows, but after months of watching the homes in my neighborhood be broken into, my wife and I had to finally make the decision to protect ourselves. We are an older couple and I have a few guns, but the last thing I want is to have to get into a physical altercation with someone who is trying to rob us. My HOA put me in a terrible situation this year when they started fining me $25 a day for having the burglar bars installed on our windows. I sent in an application for them but it was denied and I decided to pursue it anyway regardless of what the HOA board has to say about it. The letter citing us the little $25 fines were annoying and adding up fast but in my opinion they were well worth the safety of my home and family. You see, about 15 years ago my wife and I lived in a different state in an area that was having an influx of crime thanks to the economy. Homes were being abandoned or broken into, cars stolen and vandalism could be seen everywhere in that city. 
One night, while my wife, daughter and I were sleeping, our house was broken into. We had a big German Shepherd named Ajax that alerted us to the invasion and he went into full attack mode and tried to fight off the intruders. I could hear him growling and them yelling as I grabbed my pistol out of the gun's safe. As I was running into the living area, I heard a gunshot which was the sound of them shooting my dog. Two of the men had already ran out of the house and the third was bleeding after being attacked by Ajax. I shot into the dark and missed him and he got away. My poor dog thankfully survived, but he was injured badly. I have another dog today, he is a mixed breed named Gunner and is a good boy, but no one could compare to my Ajax saving our lives that day. Anyway, we have obviously moved since then and I don't want to experience another traumatizing event like this. During this back and forth debate with the HOA board about the burglar bars, two more homes in the neighborhood were broken into or several more were vandalized. My direct next door neighbor's house was one of them. After his home was robbed, I went to talk to him and he said that he was going to install cameras and burglar bars too. The HOA really does not seem to care about the crimes that are happening. Several neighbors and myself decided to go to an HOA meeting, wanting to discuss the issue at hand and see if there was any way to work together to keep everyone happy and safe. The HOA meeting was an utter joke. There were three people, one of which sat in the middle with her nose practically in the air. Maybe someone should break into her house just to make her understand what the rest of us are going through. When we began discussing the issues with increased crime, they all seemed to brush it off as something that would pass with time, assuming that once the surrounding construction of other neighborhoods was over, there would be less issues with breaking and entering. What a load of BS! How can they assume these types of things? Meanwhile, we are all losing sleep at night because there are practically two or three homes per week that are being robbed in our neighborhood or the surrounding ones. As a matter of fact, the snooty woman in the middle said, well, only some homes seem to be targeted. We cannot just allow everyone to ugly up their curb appeal because of a few unfortunate incidents. Several people were left speechless at this comment, but then there were others who just straight up started to verbally voice their opinions that she can shove it. One woman even spoke up and asked, well, if you're not willing to allow us to make security changes to our homes, then the HOA should have to pay for some of the damages and lost property. They did not like that suggestion as it implied that they were somewhat at fault for our homes being broken into. While it is not the HOA's fault or direct responsibility, it is still their job to show concern and adapt the rules to protect our homes, in our opinions at least. That's when I decided to make my move in the meeting and spoke up regarding the issues with the burglar bars. When I mentioned that I added them to my windows even after they were denied, so now I am receiving fines every day, several residents seem to become irate at this information. Many people were speaking out of turn asking how they could charge us for protecting our property etc. The HOA board seemed to show some nervousness at this point, more people have shown up since the meeting even started and the room was starting to look full. As the three board members glanced around the room with big surprised eyes, I could tell that this was not going to end well for them. After going around and around, the main woman in the middle stood up and said that there was nothing that they could do to change the policy about burglar bars, tall and unapproved fences or security cameras and dismissed herself and the others. Clearly, she wanted to leave this meeting as soon as possible before they sent a lynch mob after her. All the residents left this HOA meeting with a sour taste in their mouth. Feeling like we got nowhere because that is exactly what happened, I still received letters in the mail stating my $25 a day fine and I even refused to pay that month's HOA dues until they fixed this situation. They even mentioned that they had the right to foreclose on my home if I did not pay my fines and dues by the end of the month. At this point, it was clear the next step I needed to take was to sue these a-holes. I ended up finding a lawyer by the end of the week and we immediately began putting together our case against them. 
It was honestly not easy as fighting an HOA is extremely hard, especially in our state. But the issue at hand was safety, which my lawyer said would be our biggest supporting factor in court. The HOA was prepared as well, having a whole stack of folders and paperwork to somehow prove why I should not have burglar bars. Our judge seemed almost put off by the HOA and their attorney immediately, with how much preparation my lawyer had done before the court date, I expected it to be a lot trickier. Maybe this particular judge had dealt with HOAs in the past and did not like them. Their lawyer started talking about how the neighborhood had been safe and had no issues in months, making the burglar bars unnecessary and unsightly. They even implied that I only put them up to spite the HOA after being denied the right to install them. My lawyer had simple proof and evidence from neighbor statements and news articles showing the increase in crime to be true, unlike what the HOA was saying. It only took a few moments of the judge's eyes scrolling back and forth across the documents before he turned an annoyed stare back towards the defense. No crime, huh? He holds up the papers. I have a statement and photo evidence of crime and robberies provided by his direct neighbor from only two weeks ago. And they are not the only ones. Their lawyer stammered momentarily and looked at the HOA board members who clearly were unsure what to say as well. Those dates are wrong, the HOA woman piped up, earning herself a laugh and dismissive hand gesture from the judge. Well, to me it's pretty clear that your neighborhood homeowners association needs to care more about its resident safety than their curb appeal. He slammed the gavel onto the desk and awarded us the case. Waiving all of the $25 fees that had added up to almost $1,300 and also giving us the money I had asked for, which amounted to about $5,000 in distress and lawyer fees. I ended up giving over half of my earnings to my neighbor to help pay for the damages and lost property from his break-in. I was more than happy about winning, to me it was not about the money but more about the principle of safety. HOAs should be responsible for allowing their residents to adapt to changing situations and add safety measures to the home if necessary. I will always make sure to protect my home by any means and I will take my HOA to court to do it if necessary. The next one is titled Drunk Neighbor Karen. I am lucky enough to rent a beautiful apartment in an old Victorian place. There are three apartments and two businesses. I live alone on the top floor, second floor is a nice couple, businesses are on the first floor and Karen the bridge troll lives in the basement where she belongs. It's important to note that Karen's apartment is likely illegal as there is no access to utility panels without walking through her apartment. It's also important to know that my place is the most expensive one in the building, but since I am the new tenant I have adopted to how they do things, usually to my detriment. I have tried to make nice with basement Karen in the past, I gave her flowers when her dog passed away, invited her up when her place was flooded, helped her move her new AC into her window on possibly the hottest day of the summer etc. and Karen accepted all this with fakeness, but I don't like to live in conflict so whatever. Now Karen had decreed that the parking spot closest to her door is hers. We have a big lot and it's generally never a problem despite the two businesses on the first floor. As the new girl I took the worst space, furthest from the building and ends up in a huge puddle whenever it rains, however I don't really care. Occasionally someone will park in her spot, especially people from the businesses and she will complain about it to the high heavens but that's about it. I have never parked in her spot despite the fact that it is also the one closest to my door, whatever Karen. So this past weekend nice neighbors were away so that is even one less car in the lot. A friend stopped by and we were hanging out, it did not occur to me to ask if he parked in Karen's spot because especially after business hours, the lot only has tenants and guests in it, it was not raining, there was plenty of space. All of a sudden we hear a commotion in the hall and drunken yelling. I listened and banging commenced, but I couldn't tell if it was on my door or the neighbors, so I went to find out thinking maybe nice neighbors had friends who stopped by or someone was staying at their place and having trouble. As I get to my door I can hear someone complaining about not opening the door. I open the door and there is drunk Karen and her even more obnoxious friend. It went something like this. Me, um, hi, is everything okay? 
drunk Karen. Oh, I wanted to make sure the truck outside belongs here. Me? Yes, that's my friend's. Drunk Karen's friend. It is in her space. Me? Oh, sorry about that. Were you able to park on the hill? Next closest space. Karen? Yes. Me? Okay. Karen's friend? You need to move. Me? Now? Karen's friend? Yes. Me? To Karen? I will ask him not to park there again. Shuts door. I hear more drunk shouting and a big crash and then my power cut out twice within 5 minutes. Circuit panel is, you guessed it, in the basement. Looking out the windows, no other buildings lost power including her apartment in my building. The next day I find the crash was a bunch of stuff in the hall had been knocked over, all of which belonged to my nice neighbor. I cleaned it up. The last straw was the following day when I hear her again, outside my door, apologizing to my neighbors who were not even home when all this happened. I kind of expected at least a text, but no, 55 year old Karen has stood by her obnoxious antics and not a peep has been directed at me. So I called the landlord today and told him of the possible fire issues from electrical problems I am clearly experiencing. Looks like Karen will have tradesmen parking in her space and traipsing through her apartments to get to the electrical service for the building due to the obvious faulty wiring. Hope it doesn't need to be inspected, would be a real shame if that illegal apartment became an issue. Did I mention my guest happens to be a local electrician? F you Karen, have a nice day. The next one is titled City Revenge. As told to me by my father, I learned of this only after the new street sign appeared, though had been going on for weeks slash months. For a visual, as it is important, my father lives in the very back of a wealthy neighborhood within a secondary subdivision. Being on the last street in the back, there are only 12 other homes on his street. When you first approach, woods are on either side of the street, it then opens to the first plot on the left, a large home with a significant sized fenced in yard that is set back from the street. This is where our, edit, enter hero lives, we will call him Randy, which is a family guy reference. I am reaching the stop sign to turn onto my father's street going right, Randy's house is to your left with minimal brush in front of you, he has no one living on either side of him. His being the only house to the left, the road almost immediately feeds into his driveway creating a shallow cul-de-sac. Being only 12 homes on the street in a very quiet neighborhood with little traffic, even now I don't think I've ever passed someone as I was coming in, rarely did people stop at the stop sign beside Randy's house. The residents are not speeding, just not coming to a full stop. This was unacceptable for Randy. His complaints began on a neighborhood forum calling out people, their cars, etc. for not stopping. Weeks of complaints would continue, including concern over his daughters being hit if they were playing in the street. Fortunately, the neighbors were getting tired of him and countered by questioning why his daughters would be playing in the street, Q large fenced in yard. Being unsuccessful, Randy went to the next level. Complained to the city and police department, he would call daily multiple times to report a driver their license etc. He would demand a police officer come at X time because this was a daily occurrence everyone running the stop sign. The city never did anything about it. Until they did. Someone who used to live in the neighborhood and had grown quite tired of Randy's antics had a police officer friend. Randy's ongoing complaints finally got a change, the stop sign was updated to a yield sign and a new stop sign was installed facing only Randy's house. Remember, no one else lives to the left of the new yield sign. I can just imagine the satisfaction of presenting this solution and the Shasha cat-like grin that came over them slash their boss in approving. The only thing I wanna know, does Randy fully stop literally every time he reaches the end of his driveway or does he run the stop sign becoming that which he most despised? And ripe stars here you can see the new yield sign and here once again the sign from a different position. You really gotta wonder that some people just have too much time on their hands and complain about such petty little things. A user in the comments then also said, I was a police officer in a small city for a while and citizens filed complaints at the council meetings about all the teenage drivers that were driving past their homes as they exited the city park. The council decided to make the street one way towards the park instead of a two-way street. 
The complaining citizens were happy with the decision. So we parked on the street with full intentions of sighting drivers going the wrong way. Lo and behold, the first person sighted was a council member who lived on the street. He said the law did not apply to homeowners, so I showed him the wording of the law and there were no exceptions. Needless to say, this street is a two-way street again. And the next one is titled, am I the a-hole for telling my neighbor that I would sue him instead? I recently moved into a neighborhood in Michigan. One of my neighbors, we will call him Bob, came over to introduce himself. He told me that he has special needs son that lives with him. The son is in his 30s, physically unchallenged, but with significant mental disabilities. Bob first asked if I would mind keeping dangerous things out of my yard, like not leaving chainsaws or something unattended. That's pretty reasonable, but then he proceeded to tell me that I needed to keep my garage doors down at all times or I had to lock up anything dangerous if I wanted to keep them up. That means all gasoline, sharp tools, fertilizers, etc. Oh, also, any beer or other alcohol like in my garage fridge. Also, I need to keep my door locked at all times, else his son may wander into the house and do damage or hurt himself. Then Bob tells me that now I have been warned, if his son gets into anything, I am now liable to be sued by him. I told Bob in no uncertain terms that he was to control his kid and that if his kid came into my house and broke stuff, I would absolutely sue him and he would absolutely pay. Later I met the other neighbors and recounted this tale. They all got the same lecture from Bob when they moved in and they just said, OK Bob, and ignored it. They all think I handled it wrong and that I should have just let Bob think that everything was good. They think that I'm being a dick to Bob by not letting him believe he didn't have anything to worry about. And a user in the comments said, not the a-hole, that kid is Bob's responsibility, not yours. I will suggest putting up no trespassing signs and cameras. Another user suggested, I would go a step further and send Bob and his son an official notice of trespass. I would also inform Bob that I would be contacting Adult Protective Services should his son be wandering alone without a caretaker. That's not good for the son's safety, especially considering he looks like a grown man and strangers will react as such. What if he gets a couple streets away and walks into a gun owner's home? Not the a-hole OP. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.